Welcome to Coastal Front. Join us each week as we sit down with the movers and shakers of Vancouver to discuss stories of business, politics, accomplishment, and failure. Our aim is to keep you dialed into what matters most in our city. Now, here's your host, Andrew Johns. Right on. Well, here we are with Jesse Brown. You are the Green Party candidate for Vancouver Centre. Thanks for coming today, Jesse. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, and, great. Yeah. And I see you're wearing, sporting the, the, the nice little button. That's I green. am. This yeah. is a vintage Green Party button from, I think it's 1983, and it has a little rainbow on it. Uh, just uh, This party's based out of, it's a values-based organization. Yeah. A lot of what we talk about is social justice and peace and yeah. respect for diversity. So uh, yeah. I like to wear this one because uh, we're really diverse community yeah that's impressive actually to see i mean everybody sees rainbows everywhere now right i mean I right you're, you yes. got to be kind of an idiot to not be willing yep. to <laughs> accept all sorts of people yeah um, especially if you're running a business mm -hmm. but this button's from 19 when 19? 1983 or four 1983. something around there yeah mm -hmm. so it kind of shows you the the culture within the green party from an early state like from many years ago right yeah, way before all the others were maybe inclusive yeah we're a very progressive party i know yeah. sometimes there's rumors um that maybe we're closeted conservatives or something like that but yeah. no it is an extremely progressive party i mean i'm a progressive guy i work in charity yeah uh, i'm a part of the lgbt community i'm a gay yeah. man so yeah. you know i wouldn't feel comfortable i don't think necessarily in in well maybe maybe some of the other parties but this yeah. is the most this progressive the party to me yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 good for you mm -hmm. okay so how did you become the candidate for the green party for vancouver center do you live in vancouver center? i do i've lived in the west end uh okay. in the corner of uh, melville and butte for about 11 years now i grew up in metro vancouver in ladner which is on uh, uh tawasin first nation territory yeah and um so i worked in the community for over 11 years i used to have to drive from ladner so <laughs> <laughs> you know i uh i did poli sci at ubc i've always been politically active and uh this just felt like the right year to dive in because okay. so much is going on with this planet right now our planet is essentially dying and anyone who's paying attention can feel that right and i was acutely feeling that and i read this article uh, i forget what it might have been national geographic or something and there's a pocket of air in antarctica under the ice shelf or one very large ice shelf that is the size of manhattan but in this article, scientists have realized it's actually three times the size of Manhattan. And at any moment, it could break off, causing some catastrophic <laughs> incident in our oceans. And so I read that and I thought, OK, uh, I think I better step up. I, you know, I, I feel like an articulate person. Yeah. You know, I've got a job where I'm in charge and I can have a flexible schedule. I've got a supportive partner and I'm just going to dive in. And then two days later, I received an email from uh, the CEO of the Vancouver Center Green EDA. And it said, hey, we're really? looking for candidates so i sheepishly put up my hand yeah <laughs> sent her an email and said hey what about me yeah but uh you know i was ready to step aside if there was a star candidate because for me it's more important that we just get greens elected yeah uh but I went well, maybe to you are the star candidate. i hope so yeah. here we go <laughs> this is the start of something but yeah. uh, that's that's how i ended up as the nominee okay mm -hmm. great and when was this? When did this? When did this happen? Roughly? Uh, probably around uh, the whole process started uh, late April. Okay. Um, yeah. And then so this I has was, been on your mind for a solid six months now, roughly. Yeah, I mean, I've been in the process for for a long time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Now look, you're you're in one of the most difficult ridings to unseat a liberal yeah. member, which is the <laughs> uh, Hetty Fry. I mean, she right. she's been in this role since 1993. Yeah. She is. Um, I mean, she's a star. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she yeah. has diva status she's, in the community. Absolutely. She she's got a huge, yeah. like, almost like cult-like following. She does. Uh -huh. um, so what is it, Jesse, that's, that you can bring to the table that's different than Hetty? What are you bringing to your constituents that Hetty's not bringing to the table today? Well, I think real authentic representation from this community. And so, you know, Hetty has done a lot for the residents of Vancouver Center and a lot for the community. Uh, I mean, I think she might have been able to accomplish more and help more people if maybe she became a doctor after 10 years of community service. But 26 years is a really long time for anybody at any jobs. And there's no way that someone can care as much as they do in their 26th year as they did on day one. Right. And so I feel it's evident. And from talking to constituents, a lot of the questions are, where is Hetty? Where has she been? And then even some stories where she actually hasn't been very helpful. And I have right. my own, but I'm not going to 
share them right now, but yeah. uh, you know, working in community, uh, uh, I run a, a church. I, did I mention this already? I feel like I'm. Uh, well, uh, we did that we're off. Cameras, yeah. So let's go ahead. Go ahead yeah, and tell so, us a bit about your background. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I run a, a community-based organization called and charity called Vancouver Friends for Life Society, and it's yeah. an amazing organization. It's been around since 1994. Hetty's been a great supporter of that organization, specifically in the past when it was being founded, but. Um, it uh, provides complimentary wellness services for people with life-challenging health conditions. We're located right in the West End, and uh, it's a great spot. So I encourage anybody, if if they know somebody that's dealing with a cancer diagnosis or an HIV diagnosis or anything, and they live in the West End or anywhere in Vancouver Center, direct them to Vancouver Friends for Life because they will Is get, there a website? Yeah, Vancouver maybe, maybe Friends for Life. Pull that up real quick. I mean, I know, I know you're here to talk about your campaign, yeah, but I, it's, it's yeah. a good plug for the society. Yeah, I mean, unlike the other candidates, I still, uh, I'm working in my day job. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm pulling double duty right now. October yeah. 1st, I will be a full-time candidate, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I care too much about this organization just to uh, <laughs> step aside yeah. and focus on my political Gig. So you, you, we, we've heard how you know a little bit of background. Thanks mm-hmm. for that, and yeah. and how you got nominated. Um, now let's jump into going back to like at Hetty versus yourself. Now you'd mentioned yes. that yeah. one of the main things you feel you can bring to the table is the fact that you know you're there to listen to constituents, mm-hmm. and you don't feel like. And you know what's interesting, mm-hmm. Jesse, is as I mentioned to you just before we started filming that we've had both uh, Breen and um, David here mm-hmm. uh, just recently to also have their hear their voice. And they've all said the same thing. And so I hope that we can maybe have Hetty on here to kind of ask her that question because that seems to be a common theme. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, that's interesting that they both said that. I know that Breen- They did, and I didn't tell you that ahead of time. So it's really interesting <laughs> yeah. to hear this common theme. Uh, well, it's, I, mean, I mean, I'm curious because Breen moved to Vancouver, I think in 2014. I think he was from Saskatchewan. And uh, speaking with David at the uh, Car Free Day on Demon Street, he said he was living in Carisdale. So I don't really know how they could be authentic representatives of this community. Again, I've lived here for 10 years, over over 10 years. I've worked right. in downtown for over 10 years. And I really work with people every day and hear their struggles and hear that they're not mm. being representative and hear that they're upset that the Liberal government has proposed, uh, they feel conned essentially. They feel like sure. they were lied where they wanted proportional representation. They wanted a government that supported the environment. And then, you know, we have buy, the trans pipeline, pipeline, buy the pipeline <laughs> a day after declaring a climate emergency. Yeah. And guess what? Hetty Fry wasn't even at that vote. So right. that's an example of how she's not representing our constituencies. It seems like Hetty misses a lot of votes. I don't have the numbers. I know yeah. Breen was a little bit more up on that with yeah. his uh, copycat uh, Alexandria Cortez uh, <laughs> video, but uh, I think that's in there somewhere. Okay. Everyone's well, actually, seen I think that. David, uh, when we had him in, mentioned that she misses a lot of votes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I'd be curious yeah. to ask her why that's the case. Um, well, let's talk about the Green Party for a moment. As um, I think I mentioned to you, I've been a longtime supporter of the Green Party, but Great. I'm also that. You. You're welcome. But I'm also that swing voter. I mm-hmm. voted for the Trudeau government, and mm-hmm. the, I voted liberal. It was actually the first time in my life I voted wow. liberal in 2015. Oh, I, I voted yeah. green. I voted conservative. I'm a big supporter of the People's Party of Canada today, believe it or not. But I also support the Green Party. Okay. And, and I'm, wow. I'm one of these weird people. I'm uh, probably, you won't find very many people like me. You should wear one of these <laughs> rainbow buttons because it has every color of the party on there. <laughs> um, and uh, and, I, and I, I like Elizabeth May. She mm-hmm. seems to me to be one of the more authentic leaders she uh, in the party. Yep. Um, but look, the Green Party today is quite different than it was, uh, in my view. It's bigger. It's mm-hmm. more structured. But with that mm-hmm. also comes some concern of mine, which is uh, what I'm going to re- reference, which is you know towing the party line. Mm-hmm. How much freedom is there for you as an individual constituent? Let's say you win this. Let's say mm-hmm. you unsee uh, Hetty Fry and you become the MP for Vancouver Center. How do people from Vancouver Center know that you're not going to just tow the Green Party line and you're allowed to be able to kind of speak your mind? Well, that's what excites me specifically about the Green Party and why okay. I feel so at home is that we are grassroots and yeah. that we do allow our representatives, our members of parliaments are candidates to have their own opinions about matters to have their own ideas yeah. uh, i thought when i came on board that there would be a little bit more structure i mean this is the election where uh the green party has the most chance of advancing so sure when I, I met with some of the reps from the national party soon after i got the nomination and um i said okay so when are you gonna <laughs> help transfer some money over to the campaign and how do we get communications approved and they said well um we're not going to give you any money and uh how about you just 
uh, send us this cool video that you made and we'll share it. And so I thought to yeah. myself, okay, uh, so it's, it's my campaign. Yeah. It's grassroots. Obviously, we all share the same values Similar and that's values. what they're looking for. Right. And so in a candidate, they make sure that we're vetted very seriously. Like I had oh, to yeah? go through a very strenuous process. They went through all my social media accounts. They, you know, oh, wow. it was, it was, uh, it was a real process. And so I thought See, if they ever did that with me, I would never get in on anybody. <laughs> I was just going to say that <laughs> I'd have to start my own party. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really interesting. Yeah. So they do quite yeah, a vetting process do. before do. you go through. Yep. They want to make sure um, there's, were there any things that came up that they would have said? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not a homophobe. I'm not yeah. a racist. I'm not a misogynist. So I think yeah. they were okay with, there was a couple of political things. Obviously I'm yeah. a political guy. So, yeah, sure. you know, I've, I was, pretty concerned about uh, both the BC Liberals and now BC NDP support of LNG and fracking up north. And they, sure. they said, oh, maybe be a little less pointed or just delete that before we move your application forward. So, yeah. but nothing serious. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about um, the policies that the Green Party really stands behind. Mm -hmm. Like, is there, are there some, even though you guys all get to have your own voice and that's yeah. really neat. I like yeah. that personally as a mm -hmm. voter. Okay. I tend to, maybe because I'm more politically involved, mm -hmm. I tend to pay way more attention to my local constituents and what right. they're doing and saying. And I will vote based on that more so than, you know, the exception, like, although I have to make a lot, the 2015 was an exception when I basically ba voted for Trudeau. And I'm one of those extremely mm -hmm. disappointed. I know I won't be yep. voting liberal again, just so you know. You're right. Okay. Um, and so, you're, you're, and you're one of many. Like this yeah. is this is common when I'm out right. talking to constituents. So many people had such great hopes, and they're just very disappointed that Hetty Fry has decided to be a representative of this corrupt party yeah. instead of representing the constituents. And she had her own stat said 70 to 80 percent of people in this riding are opposed to the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion project yeah. and 400 new oil tankers going through Bird yeah. Inlet and English Bay. And so those are her own numbers. And yet yeah. she decided to, I don't think there was a vote in the House, but she, is, yeah. she has to support the party line. That's well, their that's, old school status So that's a away. question. That's what I wanted to ask you is like, so we'll, we'll go to, we'll go to your, your, the green policies in a minute, like the one of sort of fundamental, but let's talk about that for a sec. There's two t topics that keep coming up to my, in my mind that are important to Vancouver center. Cause they're kind of, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're right here in home base. One is the fact that there's an, a push by the liberal government and the conservatives to build a pipeline, mm -hmm. uh, double the pipeline yep. that's already been built out right. here which would increase uh, tanker traffic by what's the number seven fold or 12. Fold yeah. Or it's, I mean, I've heard different numbers, but yeah. uh, the one I've but been the, using is 400 new oil tankers every year going through broad inlet. Right. And, yeah. Right. And that's, that's pretty scary. Yeah. Um, uh, the other one is Jody Wilson Raybould and right. the fact that, yes. you know, Hetty's a woman and it just seems to me, I, I find it kind of odd that the way she was treated wasn't like that, that, that there were women in the liberal party who either were absentee from just mm -hmm. saying anything at all. Like they just basically, I think they were censored from saying anything. Mm -hmm. Some of them yep. actually, actually were quite supportive of Justin Trudeau. Well, and, and, yes, yeah. I think so, that was do you, you have any comments yeah. on those two topics? Well. Let's, and specifically how it relates to Hetty, Hetty Fry? Yeah, well, let's start with, uh, just because I was a little thing you ended off, uh, the, the ethics issue with the Liberal Party. And again, it just, <sighs> things add up. And so you lie about putting in proportional representation. You lie about caring about the environment and have this weird answer about balancing the climate crisis by building new pipelines so they can invest in clean. It's just it's just gobbledygook and people yeah. can smell that. And then on top of that, we have this whole ethics issue where he bullies his justice minister and when she calls him out, she gets booted out of the caucus. And mm -hmm. so I just think that uh, it's unfortunate that uh, Hetty Fry hasn't been a stronger voice. I mean, she's, she's 78 years old and she's been in the job for 26 years. This would be the time for her to stand up and say enough's enough. Right. And you know, this isn't my values. I don't think they're her values. I think mm -hmm. she she cares about the environment. She's really progressive when it comes to legalizing drugs to solve the fentanyl crisis. And she, yeah. uh, I think, would respect uh, the first ever Indigenous justice minister in her role. But instead, but it doesn't, uh, seem, but, it doesn't yeah. seem like the case. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, regarding the pipeline, uh, I just you know, it, has Hetty ever been? Has, yeah. has Hetty come out and said officially where she stands on that? I mean, with David Cavey or one of your, mm -hmm. because I mean he's. Pro pipeline. He wants that pipeline built. Yep. Mm -hmm. You, I would he assume, does. should say you don't want. Oh, the pipeline absolutely built. not. I'll do everything uh, in my power. The, what, yeah. Has Hetty come out and be clear on what her position? I haven't on heard anything specifically, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think she was initially trying to speak for her constituents uh, in opposition to it before mm -hmm. they made the 
final decision to purchase yeah. the pipeline. Um, but you know, that's a status quo party yeah. where she has to, if she wants to have her nomination paper signed again from the prime minister, toe the party right. line. And so yeah. she has to be in support of the project and she has to yeah. say some sort of talking. I have point. more of a problem with that <laughs> than actually disagreeing with somebody. At least yeah. if I disagree with you, you got, you got to at least take a stand and you're clear yeah. in where your position is. Mm-hmm. But I just, I can't stand this. As you said, wafering back and forth, mm-hmm. right? You know, you claim a claim a, a climate emergency on on Tuesday, yeah. and then buy a pipeline on a Wednesday. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, besides, uh, besides being uh, told by constituents that you feel they they feel like Hetty's just not available anymore, mm-hmm. and she's not re- rarely representing them, uh, which is is great, but it's also sound. It's a little bit high level. Let's get more granular. Like, what are some of the issues that you think um, aren't being addressed by Hetty that you would address for the local constituents and are they the the people that live in Vancouver so things like affordability come up okay all the time when I'm talking to uh local residents and Mm -hmm. uh you know I'm a renter yeah I have a family yeah and uh, I'm in an okay paying job uh we're a dual income household and there's no way that we could afford a apartment that has the amount of space that we need to have two uh, grown adults and and two uh, soon to be teenagers. So that's an issue. Uh, and, um, you know, it's it's we're building some new rental stock like uh, Davy Street and yeah. um, Alberni and Robson are all going to be transforming soon. But that's very unaffordable still when they're talking about affordable rental housing um, starting at twenty eight hundred dollars for a two bedroom. And so, right. you know, for a lot of people, it's uh, it's it's becoming really challenging to, to make ends meet. And, um, you know, the liberals have come up with some new approaches. Again, they're trying to, uh, you know, uh, replicate what's going on in B.C. There was an announcement yesterday about yeah, um, the foreign up, buyers. Yeah, they come up with a one percent foreign right. owner owner tax and they've yeah. increased the threshold on their yeah. uh, home program. I don't even know what you call it anymore, but right. uh, it's it's such a goofy program. And, Get you yeah. from five hundred thousand mm-hmm. to eight hundred thousand, which is still won't get you much in Vancouver. No. no. But what what is the Green Party, or what do you what would you bring to the table yeah. as far as addressing affordability? How would you like to address so it? One of the most interesting uh, pieces of policy that I think the Green Party is advancing is a guaranteed livable income for all Canadians, and yeah. this sounds maybe like a crazy idea. It sounds maybe like an expensive idea, but it's based in real economics that, yeah. you know, we live in a society now that's very privileged, that's very educated, and that's automating very soon. And yeah. so a lot of people are going to be out of work. Um, and there's a lot of discrepancy in uh, livability as their country grows and grows. Yeah. And so to start people off with the basics, to be able to cover their rent, to be able to cover their food, and uh, and then build off of that, makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. What it would do would it eliminate uh, programs like uh, uh, welfare and disability and sure. and uh, subsidized housing. And yeah. those are very expensive programs yeah. that in some ways entrench poverty yeah. for a lot of people. So starting people off with the means to So the, live, right, the right to basic in- income. Exactly. Like, what would the number be? Uh, it would vary depending on uh, where you are in the country. Um, okay. So I'm not totally sure about that exact number, but yeah. um, I can get back to you on yeah. that one. Yeah, okay. I actually watched a piece last night. I was quite impressed by a guy named Andrew Yang. Oh, yes. Do you know mm-hmm. who he is? Yeah, running for yeah. president yeah. in the States. Yeah, in yeah. the United States, and he's promoting this. Mm-hmm. He's promoting $1,000 to every American gets on a monthly basis. And mm-hmm. the interviewer said, uh, well, you know, why, why would wealthy Wall Street people be able to get a thousand dollars as much as uh, you know a single mom in Oklahoma mm-hmm. and he said you know the nice thing about the model is that if everybody gets a thousand then it's just fair for everybody well, that's, you know and that's it doesn't the really case, yeah. then then and the policy makes it then you're not having to kind of decide who gets what and picking you know mm-hmm. you know thresholds and all that kind of stuff so yeah. it's an interesting I've read a lot of I've read yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. Uh, sort of rep- reports or studies on this concept and it is an interesting one for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so affordability. So that's one way, one thing that you would you would really want want to get behind. Right. What are some other ways in which you think the Green Party could help support affordability in, in Vancouver Center? Well, I think another uh, great uh, aspect of the Green Party is that we're wanting to work um, towards more co-op based housing, more variety of housing. Um, there's a lot of vacant land right now on uh, Granville Island, um, yeah. uh, student based housing where we can have micro units. And so working right really closely with the, st- yeah. with, uh, with the city of Vancouver to free up some of that rental market so that uh, students can can move into this dedicated housing. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people from UBC doesn't have enough homes um, for students. And yeah. so a lot of them come to Vancouver and, and, and try and desperately find uh, 
housing that way. So, so Green Party wants to work. Uh, now's a perfect opportunity too, with uh, so many Greens on City Council, to to really get some innovative ideas happening. Yeah. Uh, so I, we believe that'll help with affordability and and yeah. the transition to a fossil fuel free economy. Yeah. Has so many benefits for mm-hmm. our society, where we can create exciting uh, new jobs. We can transition people out of the oil and gas sector. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can support. Uh, People in Vancouver, uh, we have some of the cleanest jobs here already with, uh, you know, our digital industry, uh, film and animation, health sciences, uh, tourism. And so uh, helping prevent uh, the risk uh, of an oil spill from devastating our economy that we have already existing is is also something that uh, we're really passionate about yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And that's really, uh, that's a good point about all the other ways in which we're already generating, uh, you know, um, I guess you call it clean, clean jobs, if mm-hmm. that's what you want to yep. call it. So as far as the pipeline's concerned, is it fair to say that you are starkly against the expansion? 100%. Yeah, okay. I marched up with 10,000 other British Columbians uh, in solidarity with coastal First Nations um, to say no to Kinder Morgan and the Trans Mountain Pipeline um, and to, to say no to our hard-earned Canadian taxpayers' dollars going to a Texas uh, oil company. It's right. just ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it doesn't make any sense. And putting... Uh, would, would, our, you do, may, would you make any... Would you, if you were in a role of uh, MP for Vancouver mm-hmm. Centre, would you make any steps towards trying to do something with the existing pipeline? You know, what the Green Party wants to do is transition all uh, of Canada off fossil fuels by 2050. Okay. Um, and so that means not uh, importing any new oil, and that means not exporting raw bitumen. So, you know, there are nuances with the argument regarding the pipeline, whether it's safer than rail and yada, yada, yada. But what's really happening is that some of the oil that is the dirtiest to produce, that's creating the most carbon emissions, that's devastating local communities up in northern uh, Alberta is being pumped. It's an untested subject. We don't know what happens when bitumen uh, falls or, or spills in the water. And it's being pumped still with the risk of a spillage through the pipeline, through BC, and being put onto tankers and shipped to countries that have poor environmental records and poor human rights records. And yeah. that's what they're proposing. And we're spending our taxpayers' money to support this. And right. so I'm 100% against this project. I think it's crazy. And I think that we need to, for the time, keep our Canadian oil in Canada, um, by phase that out as soon as possible, not import from other countries that have horrible human rights records. And that by 2035 to 2050, we completely transition away from fossil fuels. And we can do it. It's Possible. Greens have a plan. It's called Mission Possible. So everyone okay. should go to the Green Party website. It's okay. a fantastic plan. It's a fully costed plan from the budgetary office. Uh, we're one of the only parties to have their uh, platform fully costed. Really? Yep. We are. And so uh, it includes items like retrofitting all the buildings, which creates amazing jobs for people. Yeah. It includes electrifying. That's a great, I mean, to yeah. me, that's a mm-hmm. no brainer. Yeah. yeah. yeah to, you know, just put money into, I mean, maybe you have to take it out of taxes or find another cut it from somewhere else but uh you know just taking old buildings that are super inefficient yeah just makes sense all the way around great yeah Creates it's, jobs it's better for the environment mm-hmm. it's better you know it's better working environment for the people that are in those buildings yeah yeah sorry I think to I, interrupt but no I, no it's I, a great i'm glad I'm, you agree yeah, it's a it's a yeah. it's a gr- really good idea from the green party and yeah. you know thinking about uh you know rooftop space and you know how do we best utilize that with solar panels and such you know it's yeah, possible sure. um these are free resources that we have um it's going to take a lot of energy and work to do that and a lot of uh, capital and investment um from the government but uh it is possible to electrify our grid from uh, east to west with renewable energy sources we yeah. just have to have the willpower to do that yeah okay mm-hmm. good that's that's good yeah um, having been a, a longtime supporter of the Green Party myself, um, I've observed the party is, it seems to have graduated from, you know, elementary school. If I go back to like okay. the eighties when, <laughs> when really like the view of a Green Party in the eighties or nineties was, it was a bunch of tree huggers that right. basically wanted yeah. everybody to live in a tent mm-hmm. and that's just not realistic. Uh, but now today, if you look around the world, there's a lot of, uh, cu- there's a lot of countries around the world where mm-hmm. the Green Party is the governing party in mm-hmm. that country. Um, yeah. And so it seems like there's been a lot of uh, maturis- maturization, I don't know if that's the right word, um, uh, but even yeah. evolution of the Green yeah. Party to something that's a little bit more palatable by those who maybe aren't so hard on, you know, hardcore mm-hmm. environment, environmentalists, 
uh, they want kind of a you know a balance. Right. Is that right. a fair statement? I think so, and mm-hmm. I think it's a response to maybe the mature response to the fact that there's so much dissatisfaction with status quo political parties. Yeah. And so on one end, we're seeing people being or drawn to or gravitating towards really scary far right um, populist movements. And that's throughout Europe and even in the States and in Brazil. And, you know, so there's that aspect. And I think on the flip side, people are looking for a democratic, intelligent, scientific, rational alternative to status quo parties. And that is the Green Party, because we've been around since the 80s and doing that really thoughtful work. And I think people respect the Green Party, Um, you know, maybe yeah, in the past we were seen as uh, a little bit uh, out there, but uh, you know what's happening right now on the ground is out there, and so I think uh, I think the Green Party and and something that I why I'm gravitated to the Green Party as well is I really think it's the democratic alternative to what's going on with populism. And okay. um, you know I had a history prof at UBC, and he said that what he believed was the greatest. This was the last day of class, and he's telling our first year class like like stay vigilant. He said he's like know your history and don't get sucked into uh, despotic leaders who are going to take advantage of the climate crisis to gain power for themselves and wealthy corporations. He's like, stay vigilant on that. And so I've taken that with me since I graduated from UBC and and now's the time to stay vigilant. We need to enshrine and respect our democratic institutions and the Green Party. Just looking at Elizabeth May and how she is consistently rated the most um, well-respected leader and well-respected uh, MP by her peers. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really quality quality thing and something that I aspire to uh, to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's great, Jesse. Um, let's talk. Let's go. That's really good. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, let's go back to Vancouver Center. You're up against mm-hmm. Hetty Fry. Yeah. What do you think, people? What do you think the reason is when someone walks into that voting room and they get in front of that ballot box? Right. And they get their pen out and they go to check that box mm-hmm. and they're looking at you and they're looking at Breen and they're looking at David mm-hmm. and then they're looking at Hetty. And in the end, they check Hetty. What yep. do you think the reason <clears throat> is that people are doing that? And what do you, how would you like to address those people? Like, what's the well, reason? What's the reason that people are voting for Hetty? Why is she? Well, I mean, at this you know? point, I think they're only going to be looking at Hetty and Jesse <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I think. Uh, I, these are the options right now. It's either right. status quo or alternative. Um, mm-hmm. And um, the other two candidates, they're part of the status quo parties. They're part of parties that support LNG, part of the pipeline parties. So um, right now, I think people are really concerned in Vancouver Center. They're really concerned about the environment. They're really concerned about affordability. Yeah. But they're also scared. They're scared of the possibility and what, you know, sometimes the media feeds that, you know, it's uh, between the liberals and conservatives. Um, and and we don't want, you know, 10 more years of, uh, you know, Stephen Harper wannabe, Andrew Shearer. Uh, and, and so that's scary to a lot of progressive people. And so they might want to go with Hetty Fry. But, you know, I think it's the time. Like a strategic vote it's almost. It's a strategic vote. And so this is the year to be proud of one's vote. and. Yeah. The strategic vote is to vote for the future because we're most likely going to see a liberal minority government. The strategic vote is the vote for the future? It's to vote for the future, to vote for the Green Party because, you know, we're most likely going to see a minority government situation, a liberal minority government situation. And we need to have a core group of Greens in there to hold them to account, to maybe get them to reverse some of their poorly thought out decisions. Kind of like what's happening in BC. Kind of what's happening in BC, exactly. Um, Because we can then influence what's going on and put in some really strong policies to keep our planet uh, not raising uh, a temperature of higher than 1.5 degrees Celsius. And this is possible. The IPPC knows that... um, What's the IPPC? Oh, sorry, IPPC. See, International Panel on Climate Change, that okay. uh, group of scientists from the UN who are studying what's going on, um, they say that we're on track to uh, break our Paris Climate Agreement targets um, and go up to 3%, uh, or sorry, 3 degrees Celsius, which will essentially cause the planet to go into a death spiral, because once you get that high, you just can't fix it. But right. So we need to keep it cooler than 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius. and. And they say there's still time. It is still possible. But this is the election where I think after four years, this is from Elizabeth May, 
that window period becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And sure. so this is the time, if anybody is concerned about the climate change, this is the time to vote for your green candidate because we need to get rid of some lackluster MPs and replace them with greens in order to have influence. Yeah, and, uh, that's expiring. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Uh, Jesse, before we wrap this up, let's, mm -hmm. uh, let's look at the political landscape today. So over on the right or on the conservative side, you have the conservative party and then even a little bit further to that, you've got the, the People's Party of Canada. Mm -hmm. Let's just assume for a moment you're not going to capture any of that vote. These right. people are going to basically they're going to choose People's Party or Conservative right. Party. Um, let's say assume for a moment you're going to try and capture the vote, and then you're going to have and look and over on this side on the on the progressive side you've got NDP, you've got mm -hmm. the Liberals that are mm -hmm. kind of more center, but yep. and then you've got the Green Party. I think the NDP and Green, most people would agree, are the more progressive parties right. of those right. three. Mm -hmm. um, so now you've got your Green Party vote. You're going to have people who are going to be diehard Greens. They're going to always vote. So you don't have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. So you need to capture votes from the NDP and you got to capture a ton of votes right. from the Liberal Party. Um, let's give you one more chance to kind of speak between those three, because if you're someone over in the, on the right and you look at those, you kind of think you just think they're all the same. And maybe if you're even on the progressive side, you know, if someone's an NDP, like a lifelong NDP supporter or a lifelong Liberal supporter, uh, but they're now starting to kind of maybe question, uh, mm -hmm. maybe for the first time, mm -hmm. yeah. um, especially with Hetty, maybe this is the time I change my vote. Um, what can you? I'm going to give you more chance to speak to right. that to kind of differentiate yep. you and the Green Party from those Liberals right. and Hetty right. and the NDP, if if you want to speak yeah. to the NDP as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, I think for a lot of us who are progressive, we have voted strategically before. And because we wanted Stephen Harper out, uh, because we were concerned about where this country is going, um, because we cared about the environment, um, because we wanted a country that was more democratic and acting in an ethical manner. And so for many of us, uh, we chose, or they chose, uh, Justin Trudeau and the Liberals. And what we've seen is a government that lies, that bullies their justice minister, that you know has waffled on the environment and approved a nine plus billion dollar pipeline and uh, who you know doesn't represent maybe the progressive uh, voice the proportional representation thing again and so sure. this is the election to vote for your values and vote with your heart and I really implore any federal liberals and any NDP out there to give the Green Party a good solid look and as a candidate here I think I'm a quality candidate to be a local representative and that's what a member of parliament does mm -hmm. so we're here to be your voice in Ottawa and if you're yeah. not feeling represented by Hetty Fry and a lot of people aren't then consider the greens because you know as i said i'm a renter i with a family here in vancouver i lived here for over 10 years in the same apartment in the west end i'm on the ground every day working in the community at a charity so i hear and i work with this community and i'm from this community and i would love to represent this community because right now we aren't being represented at as Hetty's own stat was, 70% of people here are against the pipeline and oil tanker expansion project. And for a while, there is that the, is that what she? Came that's up what with? those were her own numbers. And wow. so, so you know, yeah, she's not spoken up about it. She herself. hasn't, and it's mm. embarrassing. I mean, I think she's probably embarrassed about it because yeah. her son is a green city councilor. And so, I mean, I'd be curious what uh, Thanksgiving dinner is going to be like at their house. But <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, it, you know, as, as a 78 year old. It's, she doesn't know what it's like to be a working person. I yeah. do. And I would love to be the community representative and bring green values to Ottawa. And I think there's a lot of green-minded people here. And you don't have to be scared of a conservative government coming in. The polls are all leading towards a liberal government or a liberal minority government. And if it's a liberal minority government, if we have a solid green MP here in Vancouver and a good team of green MPs on Victoria or Vancouver Island, yeah. we can really make some great progress in this uh, country and uh, and reduce our carbon emissions and uh, yeah. work towards uh, transitioning to a fossil fuel free economy great well jesse well said man thank you um so if people want to get involved and help you out um you mentioned earlier about you're not getting any funding from the green party nope. head office so <laughs> i'm sure money always helps yeah it does it yeah. does so uh if so, you go to vote jesse.ca v-o-t-e-j-e-s-s-e.ca -E 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 that has okay some priority policy areas of mine. It has how to request a lawn sign, pledge to vote, make yeah. a donation. And we'd be so grateful to have everybody get involved on the team. So yeah, um, yeah check it out. Great. Okay. So Thanks. vote mm -hmm. Are you on Twitter? I am. Yeah. Vote Jesse 2019. 
And uh, yeah, I'm new to, new to Twitter. We've got yeah. 500 followers now, so I'd like mm, to get that you. higher up. Yeah. And uh, it's it's going to be an exciting campaign. Yeah, mm-hmm. good. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you. I Thanks. hope it goes well. And uh, I'd love to see that pen uh, that pin on your yeah, jacket. You know that what? says you really. You have this pin. Oh. I've got a lot of them. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give this oh, one wow, to you really? here. Yeah. Oh, that's super go. cool, man. Yeah. Thank you for that. It's really neat. There's yeah, the uh, sure. green party pin. That's, uh, that's, that's awesome. Jesse, thanks for coming on the show today. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah.